Guys, a new trailer has just dropped for one of the most anticipated movies of the year. A classic character that we all know and love from our childhood is now hitting the big screen in live action and we get to go with her on a journey of self-discovery as she moves from her kingdom of magic into the real world. She mingles with humans and learns what it means to be a human being and has an existential crisis along the way. <laughs> No, we're not talking about The Little Mermaid again. The Barbie movie trailer is here, and we're going to talk about it. Welcome to Teacup for One. My name is Matt, and I have two degrees, and the full trailer for the Barbie movie is finally here. And I don't know about you, but the Barbie movie has somehow become the sleeper hit of my... 2023 movie watching list like I, I cared nothing about this movie when I first heard it was announced it confused me more than anything I thought to myself Barbie the movie what is that just gonna be a movie about a blonde lady is it gonna be a movie about the origin of the doll the way that they did the Tetris movie I think that I didn't watch who knows but then like the rest of the internet I started to see all those leaked photos of Margot Robbie in those ridiculous but amazing costumes and I was like okay very clearly She's playing the toy. How is this gonna work as a movie? And then I started to hear more and more things about this film. The actors involved with the project saying like, oh, my agent read the script and said that they would bet their entire career on this script. Other actors saying stuff like, it was the weirdest and most wonderful script I ever read and I was so sad because I didn't think any studio would actually put it into production. But it got put into production and it was directed and written by Greta Gerwig. The person who did Lady Bird and Little Women now pivoting to the Barbie movie. There are so many questions that I think all of us have about this film. And bit by bit, the trailers have given us more information about what's to come in the movie, but I feel like it's also invited way more questions. And I am here to ask those questions today with another classic teacup for one movie trailer reaction and review video. Let's get into it. All right, now if you haven't watched one of my classic teacup for one movie trailer reaction and review videos, we're gonna be stopping and starting a lot. Um, so I recommend if you haven't seen the trailer yet, maybe go watch the trailer first and then come back here and listen to my thoughts about it because like I'm gonna be interrupting it a fair bit. Or you know, don't and just stay here with me and we can experience this for the first time together. Well, you can, I've already seen it, let's go. All right, we are only five seconds in and they have opened with a shot that already kind of broke the internet in the previous teaser trailer. Barbie walking and taking off her shoes. It doesn't sound like much on paper, but what it's doing here visually, it's kind of mind blowing for a bunch of reasons. I mean, first and obviously, it is giving us classic Barbie aesthetic. It is pink, it is fluffy, it is opulent, but the moment that seals the deal is when she takes off the shoes and obviously her feet are just in those classic Barbie arched position, as it were. And like, as I said, when I first heard about this movie, I was so confused as to what it could actually be. It never actually struck me that the movie would be about Barbie as a toy. I thought it was just going to be about a happy blonde lady living her perfect life. But this set all of those questions at ease. And it was like, no, 100%, Matt, it's the toy. Which, in turn, invited a lot more, que a lot more questions. Uh, both about the plot, but then also about the practicality of how the bleep did they get that shot? I'm sure that there's CGI involved somehow but just the simplicity of it and the ease with which that foot model maybe it's margot robbie is carrying all of her weight on her toes effortlessly ah 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 uh, like if i was quentin tarantino i'd be a lot more into that shot than i am and i'm already like pretty into it in a not creepy way it's getting weird let's keep watching hey barbie can i come to your house tonight sure all right, to follow up on what I just said, if there was any doubt in my mind that this movie was taking place in a world of personified toys, <laughs> all of that doubt is now gone. But even accepting that, I don't think I was ready for the level of high fantasy that we're getting with Barbie literally floating down <laughs> to the ground, or not even floating, falling with style. And one comment that I read that really blew my mind was someone saying, I love that she floats down because kids never use the stairs when they're moving their Barbies from one level to another. It's genius. Genius. Let's keep watching. 
I don't have anything they planned, just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. So cool. You know what? The more I see of Margot Robbie as Barbie, the more I realize how perfect the casting is. I didn't really have any question in my mind that it was perfect casting because obviously she looks like the classic Barbie and she's also proven herself to be one of the most talented actors of her generation in Hollywood right now. But just seeing this, I mean, I didn't really play with Barbies that much as a kid growing up, but like I'm familiar, I'm familiar with the character and this to me is everything I think Barbie should be. She is perfect, but she's not snobby. She's approachable. She's like not the girl that you want to be friends with. She's the girl that you just instantly are friends with. There's just this openness to her and there is not even a trace of mean girl. And I think that's so crucial. I also love this dialogue. It's giving me insight into what exactly is happening in Barbie Dreamland. That's what I'm going to call it. I think the official name is Barbie Land. Just the fact that she is living a world where massive dance parties with bespoke songs are the norm. Like, that's a Barbie's version of A Quiet Night at Home. And also, Ryan Gosling is Ken. <laughs> Hilarious. Let's watch on. Diamonds under my eyes. This is the best day ever. It is the best day ever. So is yesterday, and so is tomorrow, and every day from now until forever. <laughs> there is so much going on there. I mean, it has nothing to do with anything, but I love that they do have the, like, flat plastic looking vinyl record that's a fun touch but this is the first time i'm getting a little bit of a sense of tension in the perfection of barbie world not to say that there's anything like sinister underlying it but you almost get the vibe when she's saying it's going to be perfect now until forever you even kind of get this feeling with the first barbie saying this is the best day ever like she's saying the words but you're not feeling it behind the eyes it's giving me the sense that there's a monotony that the Barbies are maybe tiring of. There's a sense of routine that even though, yes, perfect, leaves something to be desired. I don't know. That was just like a little seed of doubt I had in the back of my mind the first time I watched this. And it was all but confirmed by what, by what's coming up. Do you guys ever think about dying? That's it. That's that's the moment. The first time I saw the trailer when I decided that this is the movie for me. I mean, I was kind of charmed by everything that came before this. I thought it was going to be a fun, tongue-in-cheek, campy movie. But then, with Barbie asking, do you ever think about dying? It does a full 180. All of a sudden it's taking Barbie world as this utopia of what kids imagine the infinite possibilities of being an adult could be like. It takes that and turns it into the harsh grounded reality of what being an adult actually is. And I don't know if this is something that's just for the trailer or if this is actually from the film, but notice when she asks, do you ever think about dying? There's a brief flash of white and I'm wondering I'm wondering if this is like a pivotal moment in the movie. I'm wondering if just her asking that question or gaining the sentience to comprehend <laughs> death is the moment that propels the narrative into action. <sighs> Good job, Greta Gerwig. Good job. Let's keep going. When my heart breaks. Okay, I just want to pause here because I thought about this trailer a lot and about the rules that govern Barbie land. And this is just a really nice overhead shot where we get to see the geography of Barbie land. Now, every time I've seen this clip in previous trailers, my eye just went immediately to what we had in the center. It was bright, colorful, all of the streets spell out Barbie land. But now I'm just taking a second to observe what's on the outskirts of this heart. The water is not nearly as blue. It's not as saturated. It looks much more natural. The grass is non-existent. It's just like a desert or a barren wasteland. So like, is that heart? Is that a gate? Is it a barrier? Are we looking at some WandaVision crap happening here? I noticed that the airplane, the pink Barbie airplane, seems to be able to fly over the airspace both within and outside of the heart-shaped barrier that protects Barbie land. Maybe I'm overthinking the geography of Barbie land. That's a funny sentence. Let's keep watching. Some things have been happening that might be related. When my world Cold shower, Ooh. falling off my roof. Ah! 
<laughs> she fell off her roof. Um, so I'm interested in that line when she says things are happening that might be related. Immediately, my first thought is related to what? I think that's a plot point that obviously we're going to get in the movie that we didn't get in the trailer. But is it related to her saying, do you ever think about dying? Is that what put all of these weird events into motion? It reminds me, well... It, it reminds me about a lot of things, and actually part of the reason I find this movie so intriguing is because it does seem to echo or parallel a ton of my favorite films, but in this specific instance, it's reminding me of, okay, okay, I have a deep cut reference and then I have a deeper deep cut reference. I'm going to start with a deeper deep cut reference. Does anyone who grew up in the 90s, like any of my fellow millennials out there, do you remember Mother Goose Rock and Rhyme? Hot to it. Hot to it. It was this TV movie, it starred Shelley Duvall, it was about all the nursery rhyme characters living in like Rhymeland or Rhymeville or something, then all of a sudden Mother Goose disappears, and with her gone, like not there, to govern nursery rhyme land, all of the nursery rhyme characters start to fade in, like out of existence, Avengers Infinity War style. It's also very reminiscent to me, and this is probably the example I should have opened with, it's very reminiscent to me of Pleasantville. If you haven't seen Pleasantville, first off, I highly recommend that you see Pleasantville. But the premise is, I mean, in some ways it weirdly mirrors, I think, what we're getting with the Barbie movie. So Tobey Maguire and Reese Witherspoon play brother and sister. They get sucked into a television through a magic remote control. And then they are in the world of the 1950s sitcom Pleasantville, which is kind of like an I Love Lucy, Leave It to Beaver-esque perfect world. Except just by merit of them being teenagers who are socially aware, I guess, from 1999, just by merit of them being there, they start to call into question some of the practices and the values of Pleasantville. And in doing so, they throw the entire world out of whack and all of a sudden things that were pleasant are no longer pleasant like toilets appear in bathrooms where toilets didn't exist it's pure and utter chaos it is such a good movie and i'm getting i'm getting similar vibes from barbie here and and i like it also i need to rewatch pleasant film and mother goose rock and rhyme but first i'm gonna rewatch the trailer and my heels are on the ground <gasps> I have flat feet, like severely flat feet, to the point where it's causing knee problems. This hits a little too close to home. <laughs> so does that. What do I have to do? You have to go to the real world. Okay, now we are getting into the thick of it. There is a lot to break down in what we just saw here. I mean, we all knew that Kate McKinnon was part of this all-star cast lineup because we all saw the posters. They were incredible. And just based on the posters, I thought Kate McKinnon was going to be a funny side character because obviously, like, she is the Barbie that fell victim to a three or a four year old with a pair of scissors and crayons and no parental supervision. <laughs> and so I was fully prepared for her character to just be like a sight gag, but it seems like she is serving a significant narrative purpose <laughs> because notice she is living in isolation. She is not down there partying every single night with the other Barbies. It's almost like she's been exiled or forced herself into isolation from the rest of the Barbie community, likely because she's seen things. She knows things. Things no Barbie should see, things no Barbie should know. And Margot Robbie is on the same path as her. I think. I know. Let's keep watching. You can go back to your regular life, or you can know the truth about the universe. The choice is now yours. The first one. The high heel. You have to want to know, okay? Do it again. <laughs> There's so many layers. There are so many layers here. Obviously, with the two shoes, we're getting a little bit of a Matrix moment, like Red Pill or the Blue Pill. <laughs> but what's super interesting to me about this scene is that, yes, it does have the Matrix parallel, but I think it goes a little bit bigger than that. Because it truly seems to be embracing Plato's allegory of the cave. And now, I say that kind of lightly because I'm in no position to sit here and pretend I can give you a lesson in philosophy. Because as I've said multiple times, I got a C and almost failed my university philosophy course. But the one concept that I grasped onto that I found fascinating, even if I couldn't fully comprehend it, was Plato's Allegory of the Cave. Because I realized that almost all of my favorite movies are in some way an interpretation 
of that idea. And so you can probably find other YouTube videos that explain it more eloquently, but my understanding is that Plato's allegory of the cave proposes, imagine you have all of these people who are essentially prisoners, and for the entirety of their existence, like for their whole life, they've been chained inside a cave, like fixated and forced to only look at the back wall of the cave. As far as these prisoners know, that back wall of the cave is the entirety of the world. It's the whole universe. And against this back wall, they see shadows, which are basically projections of the things from the real world, which are all existing very closely in proximity just behind them. So like, for example, if a cat walks by the cave, they're going to see the shadow of the cat. So they know cats to be something that's roughly this shape, but they can't appreciate and don't understand how beautiful and luscious its fur is. They don't know how wonderful the eyes can be. They don't know how cute and what a good boy the cat is. So yeah, they have a limited understanding. So they have a limited understanding of what the real world actually is. But then one day, one of those prisoners escapes his confines. He turns around, he sees, or she, sees the entirety of the real world and all of a sudden becomes enlightened. Then they go back to their friends in the cave and say, hey, listen, I've discovered all of these amazing things in the real world and it's right there. You guys just have to look. And then the people in the cave are like, no, I think that's how it goes. I'm probably wrong. Correct me in the comment section down below. But what I find so engaging about the allegory of the cave is this whole interplay between what's real and what's fabricated or what's a shadow of that which is real. And specifically the journey that a character goes on when they make that discovery. Like, it's kind of a core foundation of The Truman Show, which is my all-time favorite movie tied with The Wizard of Oz. I think The Wizard of Oz also has a couple elements of that sprinkled in as well. It's such a cool concept, I think. Again, I gotta see, so maybe I don't totally understand it. But what I do understand is that seemingly Greta Gerwig is fully embracing that concept and building her movie around it. And I love it. Let's watch on. Closer I am to fine Closer I am to fine <laughs> Yet again, another moment that just totally sells me on Ryan Gosling as Ken, making us fellow Canadians proud. There's this pink arch in the background of the shot, which I think might be a piece of that like heart-shaped gate or barrier that cuts off Barbie Land from the rest of the real world. I I don't know. I don't. I have so many questions about the mythology of Barbie Land. Let's uh let's watch on. I'm coming with you. Okay. How can you not smile watching that? There's two things that I love there. First, Ken saying, I'm coming with you. I love a good road trip movie. I love a good journey of self-discovery on a literal journey, but that sequence of Barbie and Ken traveling, <laughs> it's, it's so magical. And it's also so much fun to see Barbie utilizing all of the tools, all of the vehicles, all of the skills that she has acquired doing literally everything to get herself and Ken from Barbie land into the real world. Like there's an RV, they're going through space, they're sailing. She can do it all. She is everything. He's just Ken. Wow, this is the real world. <laughs> Why are people laughing? I mean, I get that they're in colorful flamboyant outfits, but I'm pretty sure I've seen people wearing equally colorful, if not more colorful and more extravagant stuff during the summer, especially in a beach community. And is this Los Angeles? I don't know for a fact, but it kind of looks California-esque to me, speaking as an expert in the field, as a Canadian who's never been to California. So yeah, why are people laughing? I don't think they look that ridiculous. So let's keep watching. What's going on? Why are these men looking at me? Yeah, they're also staring at me. Good for her. <laughs> And thus a meme was born. I've already seen these mugshots used for so many hilarious memes on the internet, so good job internet, keep doing the Lord's work. But also, why are they in jail? She's the one who was assaulted, American legal system. Barbie in the real world, that's impossible. If this got out, this could mean extremely weird things for our world. Wow, if I had a nickel for every time Will Ferrell played an antagonistic adult ruining the fantasy world of a beloved children's toy, I would have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. 
In that clip, we also got our first look at America Ferreira, who's playing a Mattel employee, and I think she just articulated what all of us watching this trailer and watching the movie are thinking. Barbie in the real world? That's impossible. This is a big question that I have for the movie that, like, they have to address. Obviously, they have to address this. How do they know and come to believe that she is, in fact, Barbie the toy brought to life and not just a blonde lady with a vivid imagination? And now, correct me if I'm wrong, but if this movie is, in fact, taking place in California, on Hollywood Boulevard, aren't there a bunch of buskers and people dressed up as famous characters that will, like, take pictures with you in exchange for tips or something? Kind of like what they have going on in Times Square? Because how do they know she's not just one of them? Eh, anyway, let's keep watching. We haven't played with Barbie since we were, like, five years old. Oh! I don't know why, but this moment actually breaks my heart. A little bit. Just Marco Robbie's reaction. It's just so earnest, it's so pure, and it's so sad. It's given off the vibe of like a parent or an older sibling that is just so full of love being totally shut down. And I don't know, I want I want her to become best friends with these girls. I want her to solve whatever their problems are. I want them to help her solve whatever her problems are. I'm pretty much just describing the movie Life Size with Lindsay Lohan and Tyra Banks. Does anyone else remember that movie? Tyra Banks plays a fashion doll who is basically Barbie, who comes to life kind of infused with the spirit of Lindsay Lohan's dead mom because Lindsay Lohan's character is practicing witchcraft to bring her dead mom back to life. It's basically necromancy, but it doesn't have a bad ending because Tyra Banks comes to life as a doll and becomes the maternal figure that Lindsay Lohan's character has been missing. Then ultimately at the end, she goes back to Eve world because they need her there because kids aren't buying toys anymore and they don't believe in the magic of imagination or something. So is this just a higher budget version of that movie? Possibly. I think the difference is that in Life Size, it's more about the doll coming into Lindsay Lohan's world to help her solve her problems. And I'm really getting the sense here that this is a story about Barbie having her problems solved by coming out into the real world. So it's almost more like Enchanted, I guess. Okay, I'm just gonna add Enchanted to the list of movies that Barbie reminds me of. Let's watch on. No one rests until this doll is back in a box. Even if nobody else sings along. All right, I have no idea what's happening in those clips. I think it's pretty evident that Barbie's presence in the real world is causing chaos there, but it also looks like Barbie Land is a little bit more chaotic than it was when we started. And this clip. I just have one big question, one very pressing question. Is this what the Kens meant in the first trailer when they were threatening to beach each other off? I will beach both of you off at the same time. Beach both oh, of us I off? Beach. Nobody's gonna beach anyone off. Now that we've successfully beached one another off, let's watch on. Humans only have one ending. Get that for me! Ideas live forever. She's crying a single tear. That line, that line is so much more poignant than anything I would have anticipated coming from the flippin' Barbie movie. It's such a beautiful idea, and I'm sitting here, I'm trying to, I'm trying to assess what it actually means. What do we think the message of this movie is? On some level, I think it's fairly obvious what the story is. Barbie is caught between what it means to be a toy and what it means to be a human, like she's understanding what it means to be human. She's contemplating death for the first time. She's learning how to navigate herself in a world that doesn't literally revolve around her. But like, is do we think the movie is going in the direction of saying that it's better to be a human than to be a Barbie? And is one necessarily better than another? I think there's a lot of stigma surrounding Barbie and there has been for decades, like just surrounding what Barbie says or implies about beauty standards, body image, gender, and all of those are fair and legitimate conversations. But at the same time, I do think that there is a lot to celebrate about Barbie and everything Barbie represents in terms of unlimited possibilities, aspirations for kids or for anybody to be anything and everything that they want to be. Again, she's everything. He's just Ken. 
So on the one hand, I really don't want this movie to go down the path of Enchanted, where the main character is, like, fixed by being exposed to the real world. But on the other hand, from what we've just seen in the trailer, I really feel like there's no place for Margot Robbie's Barbie in the Barbie world. Ugh, it's The Little Mermaid all over again. I don't know, I think there's been so much buildup about this script that I don't want to get myself too hyped up for it and then ultimately be disappointed. Because if it ends up being a movie that we have seen a bunch of other times, like Enchanted, that's the one that's coming to mind the most prominently for me right now, but just like Enchanted with a Barbie skin on top, I'll be a little disappointed. But at the same time, I don't doubt that Greta Gerwig knows what she's doing, so even if it is a movie that feels familiar once we get past the novelty of all the Barbie elements, I feel like there's still going to be a lot of poignancy and a lot of beauty and a lot of fun and laughs all coming together for a good time. <laughs> oh, and there's a couple of seconds left of the trailer. No, I won't let you do just one appendectomy. But I'm a man. But not a doctor. Can I talk to a doctor? You are talking to a doctor. Can I need a clicky pen? No. <laughs> Oh my gosh. If he is literally just Ken, if Barbie goes on this gorgeous journey of self-discovery about what it means to be a human being, and Ken is just there trying to cut people open because he thinks he's a doctor. <laughs> oh... Maybe that's the missing piece of the puzzle. Just any movie is made better if you add a Ken. I also want to point out that the trailer ended with Barbie Girl, or a cover of Barbie Girl by Aqua. I read multiple statements saying that Barbie Girl was in no way going to be included or involved with this movie in any capacity because of the tumultuous relationship between Mattel and Aqua, but apparently somebody got a lot of money because there it is, and money solves every problem. <laughs> And with that, friends, this concludes yet another episode of Teacup for One. Let me know in the comments section down below. Are you excited for the Barbie movie? Are you going to see the Barbie movie? What do you think the Barbie movie is bleeping about? Let me know. And if you want to be the first to know when I release more videos talking about movies, Disney, Shakespeare, Funko Pops, apparently Barbies, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. And if you haven't subscribed already, it is so easy. All you have to do is click on my face. Thanks for joining me again today, everyone. My name is Matt, and I have two degrees, and that's the T, cup for one. I'll beat you off. <laughs>